Good, right? So 33 is a symbolic number, okay? The symbolism refers to the asymmetric rhythmic phasing that is an inevitable result of superimposing an odd beat cycle over 4-4. Four, four. So for example, if I superimpose a 33 beat cycle over 4-4, four, four, that 33 beat cycle is incrementally displaced against 4-4. Four, four. The incremental displacement is what facilitates the counterintuitive rhythms that Meshuggah is known for. So the 33 principle is just the juxtaposition of the odd beat cycle against 4-4 four, four, and then just reaping the rewards of syncopation that are the byproduct of that juxtaposition. The thing about 33 is you don't have to just use 33. You could use 17, 29, 41, whatever. It's just that 33 is like the essential ubiquitous beat cycle. And when you understand 33 as a beat cycle, you understand all beat cycles. Now, one of the many powers of using beat cycles in your compositions is that all ideas created within a given beat cycle are inherently congruent with one another. So what does that actually mean? That means that if I wanna develop this riff that I created in the last video, all I need to do is create the next riff within a 33 beat cycle and boom, right? Because the subconscious is going to recognize the common thread from riff A to riff B, powerful stuff. All right, so let's actually listen to the riff I made in the last video, just as a refresher. I produced a little bit, sounding pretty juicy. Check it out. Filthy, right? Filthy. Okay, so let's talk about how that riff actually works. So look at this, right? So this is the riff, right? This is exactly what you just heard, right? So how does this break down? Well, let's just look at it from like an intuitive geometric level. Do you see this geometric pattern that repeats three times exactly, right? One, two, three. Oh, what happens on this fourth time? Why does it look weird? Because it's truncated, right? So you have three 33 beat cycles, and then on the fourth cycle, it's truncated to stay in 4-4, four, four. classic Meshuggah, right? Truncating the beat cycle to stay in 4-4, four, four. giving you another free variation that's just a byproduct of systematic composition. So I think of this riff on three levels, okay? Macro level, meso or middle level, and micro level. So what is the macro level? Well, the macro level is just how many times the cycle repeats. So in this case, the beat cycle repeats three times as 33, and then on that fourth time it's truncated. So that's the macro component. It's three with a fourth that's truncated, right? Okay, so then what's the meso component? Well, the meso component is what makes up each individual 33 beat cycle. So that's what this is. That's that's that geometric shape that you're just recognizing getting your head, right? So what is this thing made up of? Well, it's made up of four sevens and a five, right? There's one seven, two sevens, three sevens, four sevens, and a five. That takes us to 33. So our meso components are seven, 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 five. Now, what are our micro components. Our micro components are what make up each individual seven and or five, right? So this is where threes and twos come in. Threes and twos are always going to be your micro components in the same way that 99% of the time your meso components are going to be sevens and fives. So how did we organize our sevens and fives in this particular variation? Well, we did three, two, two, right? So this represents three sixteenth notes and this represents four sixteenth notes, and we did that four times identically, so all of the four sevens are three, two, two, and then the five is three, two. So you see those three levels, right? It's always macro, meso, micro. Macro is almost always referring to how many times does the beat cycle happen before you have to deal with the truncation. Meso is basically always dealing with sevens and fives because sevens and fives are always gonna be making up your beat cycle, right? Because think about it. If your beat cycle is say 17, 
you're probably gonna do five, five, seven, or let's say your beat cycle is 22, right? Then you would go five, 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 seven, right? It's just, you're gonna get that bang for your buck using sevens and fives, and they're always gonna apply on that meso level. So then on the micro level, you're always gonna be dealing with threes and twos because that's the smallest common denominator of all rhythm. It, it always breaks down to threes and twos. So you see those three clear levels. All right, so now that you see those three clear levels, let's start with the new riff with the micro level, okay? So if our previous organization of seven was three, two, two, why not two, two, three, right? Micro variations already taking shape. So we're just on B flat like always, right? So this, right? Now that's our new chunk of reality that's gonna represent seven. And we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste that four times to bring us to 28. You know the process, right? One, two, three, four. And now we have one five left. Let's keep consistent with the variation and make the five a two, three, right? So we got 33 there and we've just dealt with an effective micro variation. Now I'm gonna skip over to the macro level because guess what? The meso level is actually just gonna be a byproduct of the macro and micro, right? Always. So remembering that the macro level deals with how many times the beat cycle occurs. If the last time we had four cycles truncation on the fourth, why don't we just do anything other than that? I'm gonna go with three. Let's go three beat cycles truncation on the third, dude, right? So here we go, right? So that means I'm gonna copy and paste this. One, two, three. And look at that. The truncation is, it's 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 already there. Like, look, at boom, done. Oh my God, it's too easy. It's writing itself, right? Okay, so now that we've dealt with macro and micro, let's deal with the meso. So this is literally where the machinery of the universe takes over and you start to channel the source of all creation. Like literally, dude, like get out your sticky notes, prepare to be enlightened, okay? So in our previous riff, our meso level was always 77775, right? So I'm feeling like all we need to do is move the five somewhere else, right? So like, first iteration of the 33 beat cycle, that's this, right? This whole thing is the first iteration of the 33 beat cycle, right? So we have the five at the end of the cycle. What if we just put it not at the end of the cycle? I'm feeling like putting it over here. You see what I'm doing here, dude? You see what I'm saying? Like machinery of the universe taking over right now. Watch this. So now what do I have? I have seven, 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 five, seven, three sevens, a five and a seven, obviously, right? Oh, watch this though. What do we do with the next one? Let's keep the variations coming, kid, okay? Why don't we put the five after two sevens, right? So like this, right? So here's the five, right? Put it after two sevens, would put it right here. See what I'm saying, dude? You see what I'm going with this? Look at that. Now, our second iteration of 33 is seven, seven, five, seven, seven, right? You see what's happening right now. Okay, so now we have one more iteration and guess what? There's a built-in variation due to the truncation. That always happens and guess what? I'm gonna leave it like that because it's different. It has an automatic variation. Machinery of the universe taking over. I don't need to do anything more, right? So that means the last iteration is now seven, 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 nine, dude. And it's truncated and we're still in four, four. Boom. All right, so what have we done here? We've literally just created a sick rhythm. That's it, right? And like I always say, a great riff is just a natural extrapolation of a sick rhythm. So this rhythm is literally just gonna tell us what notes it needs in order to sound as sick as possible. So notice, I literally have not pressed play to listen to what we have this entire process. This is gonna be the first time I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna actually put the metronome on to give me that pulsing juxtaposer, right? So let's listen. It writes itself, it's not me. I'm just channeling the source of all creation here. Watch, watch. You'll see how obvious this is after the fact, right? 
So I'm first just addressing the first cycle, right? Right? See if this makes sense to you. Let's see, let's see. Actually, not, not yet. You hear it now. Yup, yup. Yes, it, it's going up. It's like, oh, here we go. Like, no, yes, yes. And I already know, I already know, dude. Are you kidding me? I already know. Okay, look at this. This is like the wave cycle. Dude! Okay, what? Yes! Full circle moment, dude. That's your first 33 beat cycle right there. That's the first one. Look at this. Okay, let's listen to the first iteration. Are you kidding me, son? Okay, now something interesting happens here. So remember how in the first riff, all of the iterations of the B cycle are the same, right? They're the same, right? Because they're all seven, 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 five. So they're all the same. But remember in this one, they are not all the same meso components. The meso components are juggled up. So that means I'm not going to copy and paste this like I did in the last one. I have to keep going. I got to keep going, dude. So the next one is going to be some kind of like response, right? It's not a repeat. It's a response. So it's like, okay, let the rhythm tell us what it wants. Let's listen one more time and see what pops out at us. Dude, literally. Right? So now let's just address this, right? Addressing that second iteration. You know, I actually hear this. Octaves, dude. Powerful stuff. I think this too. Yup, I do. I do. That's the one. And now I hear this one because that's that third development, that minor third. This is the minor third. And then that major third development. That's that's what this is, right? This is the major third, the minor third. And then it becomes major third again. That's that kind of like ascending wave cycle vibe. It's kind of the same thing here, just in a whole different location, right? So watch this. You see it like, shifts the harmony instantly. The vibe is changing. So let's get to the end of that iteration, right? It's, it, the end is here. The end is in sight. I think it's just this. I think that's it. That's your second iteration of 33. So we'll listen to that on its own. I love it. I freaking love it, kid. Okay, so last, right? Truncator now. Now let's deal with the truncator. So it's kind of like the vibe is starting to die down, right? It, it, it like peaked right here. The vibe peaked right here. And now that truncated variation is kind of bringing it back to set up the repeat, right? So that's why I'm seeing like lower pitches, right? We haven't used the flat nine yet, right? So that that's always a great note because it's in the first riff. It's a prominent note in the first riff, the flat nine here, right? But then it's just kind of keeping with that theme of that octave jump, right? Because that, that really sounds nice. And now I'm just kind of taking the opportunities as they come, right? I'm kind of repeating material from the previous iterations, right? Right? That's what that was the at the beginning of this riff. We had that major third, minor third thing, right? That's kind of the secret motif that we're using. So now we're about to finish this off here. What's missing? Let's let's listen one more time and see if all is revealed. Truncated iteration. It's this guy. Keep it freaking simple. Now look at this. I see an opportunity. I call it a golden opportunity. Look at this. We have never used two 16th notes in a row ever in any of this composition. So this is where we're finally going to do it. And that's the completion right there. That's the whole freaking thing. Just hitting up that flat nine once again. So let's loop this and let's see if this scratches the itch. And 
and I already hear something. I hear something with these octaves, dude. Keeping the like reversing, you know, going back in time. At once you know what the future holds, kind of stuff. It's these octaves. These octaves are are the key thing right here. Yeah, dude. Literally. Okay. All right. All right. Time for a change of scenery. Oh, good, son. Welcome to Mont Royal. Oh, look at this place. Pretty sick, right? You know what this place is? This is where I come to synthesize. Okay? I synthesize here, okay? The gas station mentality album is a synthesis of this knowledge that I'm sharing with you now. It is a realization or an actualization of this systematic way of composing. And the danger is thinking that parameters and systems will inhibit your creativity, but it's actually the exact opposite. Give yourself parameters and watch your creative solutions reveal ideas that you never even thought you could ever conceive. So that's why I'm telling you to go check out the Gas Station Mentality album link in the description okay this is how you support the channel this is how you support this content and this is also how you expand your creative understanding okay because that album I could tell I can tell you right now you've never heard anything like it I, I can guarantee that right it doesn't sound anything like Meshuggah it doesn't sound anything like anything but it is taking these geometric concepts and synthesizing them into a whole new actualization. possibilities are truly endless, right? You're not just going to end up with Meshuggah sounding music if you if you use these concepts. You're going to end up with your best version of your own music, right? That's really what these ideas are driving at. So check out the Gas Station Mentality album, buy it, support the channel, become a fan, spread the word, okay? And I'll keep coming at you with this enlightening content. I'm not done. I've got infinite it just keeps going i can do this for every beat cycle under the sun and guess what i'm going to because i feel like i'm supposed to this is the value i'm going to add to your life so support me in doing this buy the album and i'll see you at the gas station good oh did you uh, have fun out playing in the snow because i was here sequencing the percussion so you could hear this riff against a fat freaking beat dude get ready this thing's gonna blow our heads off i guarantee it dude oh and by the way Support the freaking channel, kid! Alright, check it out.